Hello and good evening everyone. Welcome to the Incomparable review. So Incomparable is the tier 10 special ship that you can get from the armory. So let's go to the armory, shall we? Ship steel. It'll cost you around 31,000 steel. So let's do a little bit of quick math, shall we? 31,000 times 0.75 for the coupon. It'll cost you about 23,250 steel. So it's a little bit of steel. It's a little bit of much money, but it's definitely worth it. Now, incomparable. A lot of these. Now, the large caliber shells prevent ricocheting off 35 millimeter armor and below. So that's a lot. Most ships don't have that kind of, most ships you'll be facing, like cruisers, you'll just go right in, you'll just chunk them. So, let's look at our economic boost. 50% to credits, 105 to ship XP, hundred and fifteen to commander XP, and then... Well, 150 with a clan. So, 100 base, 50% with a clan. So, I'll definitely run a clan if you're going to run this ship. Now, armor-wise, this is where it gets kind of, like, interesting. She only gets a 25mm bow, which is like tier 7 armor on the bow and the stern. But then we look at, like, how our armor plating on our sides work. 102, 127, 102... And then you'll get the belt armor, which goes from 102 to 155. Runs along basically the whole of her ship. And then she gets 127 little aft plating. So basically she can bounce, you know, 406 millimeter shells and, you know, lower caliber shells on this belt armor. And you're going to see that in the replay, how I just bounce 406s off this belt armor. It may look squishy. It may not have the best health, it may have a pretty good health pool, but it doesn't, but it has really decent armor if you know how to angle and tank. And that's the key to this ship, is angling and tanking. Now, survivability-wise, it's actually pretty decent at 70,000, but that's still on the low side. Like, Burgone only gets 74,700, so it is on the low, it is the, one of the lowest on the whole, um... HP pool. Now, 14% torpedo reduction, nothing. Look at Burgone. 44 versus 14. You take torps in this thing, you're going to be hurting. This thing doesn't have a torp belt, basically. So, you know, torps are your worst enemy. Now, artillery-wise, she gets 6 508mm guns. Again, like you saw in the description, these, these basically overmatch and don't ricochet off 35 millimeter armor and above so 35 millimeter armor and below so these things are pretty punchy but again the number of shells is your downside you're only getting six versus like say Burgone gets 12 Kerfurst gets 12 um Ohio gets eight most ships you'll be facing gets more guns so you run into that old dilemma of do more shells equal more now, they are now with a with a base reload of 28 seconds, and then with gun X gun feeder, it's a 17 second shift uh, switch time. 30 second turret reverse, so not bad. Now I do now this is where it gets different. You can either choose to run the range mod or not to run the range mod. With the range mod. It goes up to 20 kilometers range, and the Maxis version goes up, okay, to 204. Without the ring, with the reload mod, it drops down to about 24 seconds, and then it drops down to about like 17 kilometers. So there's a big difference. Now, I would recommend running range mod and randoms. And then running reload and if you're doing competitive like ranked or clan battles. Because of that range, it's not going to matter. Because this thing is super stealthy. 
Now, secondary wise, you know, sorry, she gets 11 of these twin uh, 102 millimeter guns. So basically junk for this for tier 10. So you basically your whole selling point are, are the six 508 millimeter guns. Torpedo wise, the torpedoes are actually decent. She basically gets. You know, they're out, they're out on the deck, so they can be destroyed, but she gets two quad sets of 553mm torps, 10 kilometer range, and 62 knots. Now, these are basically, you know, charging in and attacking ships. You're not going to drop these from, like, far away and get... You might get lucky if you do it, drop them, lay, and run, but these are more for, like, pushing an enemy and attacking. Because then you can use your arm, belt armor and bounce shells while you're pushing and then torp them at the last second. But they are pretty good torps. But they're mostly useful in ranked and the rare occasions and randoms. Now AA, it's not too bad. She gets 26 single mount or lichen machine guns. 8 dual mount 20 mil, mil, millimeter or lichen. Um, four times four um, well I don't really know what that one is actually but she gets like 40 millimeter guns then she gets 12 bound dual purpose 40 millimeter guns and then she gets the tried and true, I'm sure everyone's seen these guns in World War II videos and everything. The tried and tune, the tried and she gets eight pom pom, four pom pom guns. So, again, she gets a lot of four mil millimeter damage. And then she gets the, her 100s are basically, her 11 secondaries are basically those long words. Now the AA, four, 5.5. 0.8 kilometers uh, shell damage 1400 and a continuous of 437 again not much against tier 10 planes a really good CB player can just outdo you knock them off Hakuyu midway since you don't have a great torp belt the torps are going to kill you either way so not great a8 speed is where she really excels at 33 knots, a big turning circle of 1,160, 12-second rudder shift, and then her concealment is like cruiser concealment at 10.6. Now, let's get into the modules, shall we? Now, for modules, of course, main armaments won because of your guns. You don't get many of them, so you want to sort of keep your guns alive in your torpedo tubes if you, just in case. Engine boost modification one. Aiming systems one. Rudder sh steering gears modification one. Concealment mod one. And then you can choose to run range mod for randoms. And then reload for rank or clan battles. Should incomparable be allowed. Now for... Consumable wise, she gets well fully built into it, which I don't have, you know, that fully built in. But she gets three super heals, four if you have um, Andrew Cunningham. Then you get that extra heal. She gets three engine boosts, three short range hydro acoustic consumables, range of torps three kilometers, ships three. Subs two kilometers, so but at three kilometers, you're basically dead unless you're going bowing to them. If you're going broadside to torps, you're dead. Now, she does get the choice between fighter or spotter plane, run spotter plane, because then you get a little bit extra range on top of the reload and randoms, or the range and randoms, or extra range and like ranked or competitive wise. And then for, you know, her um, 
Camouflage, this is what, it, what the first one looks like. That's what the second one looks like. Personally, I like the side of the first one. It just looks more nicer. Now, for concealment lines, this is my battle cruiser uh, captain. So I was gonna. So since I only have 16 points, I run gun feeder, brisk, adrenaline rush, emergency repair expert, and concealment. I would probably run with another five skills. Grease the gears and basically improved repair party readiness because you don't get so you don't get a few of them so you want to make use of what you have. Now let's get into that replay and I'll show you how incomparable does it. Hello and welcome to the in camp blah, 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 incomparable review. Now incomparable the tier. 10 special uh, steel ship. Now this ship is a pretty penny. It's going to set you back or with the coupon around I believe around 20 action station 3,000 coal. It's, it's pretty expensive but right off the bat we have one of the best CV players on the NA um, server. Uh, KSD Firuju. This guy has like a has practically really great stats in his midway. I think it's like a he has like a hundred and I think he said he had a hundred and twenty hundred and fifty thousand average damage in midway, hundred and I think hundred and sixty in Hakuyu, and then at least a fifty percent win rate in both ships, which is for a carrier really good. This guy really helped and then carrying this match like we did pretty well now i usually don't run range mod but my bunks guys have told me you know run the range and um randoms and then run reload and ring so i was like okay but i'm timed up with my friend with my boys from bonky so we've got a bonky day going on here And the Ashino is literally right there, but I can't see him. But he's legitimately just right there. Now the CV is coming for me, of course. Mr. Hakuyu. He takes, you know, 8,000 off me, but he loses basically his whole squadron. So, eight planes gone for a tier 10 carrier, so not a good trade for him. I know those were probably for spotting, but still. Problem solved, sir. You're gonna need those planes later, man. And I just kind of take up a middle position. One, because I also don't want a destroyer to cut through the south and kill our carrier. I was worried about that. And again, really good dispersion, just not getting the Citadel. But our carrier is going in on that Yoshino. And Yoshino is decent AA, but against this kind of carrier, not going to... And I was thinking, uh, he's going to come for me. But I think between the Edgar and my AA, he decided to call his planes back for some reason. But I know he was going to go through. And right there, our Shima does go down to their ship. And our Shima, their Shima kills our Smolin. So, right off the bat, it's like, oh boy. It's one of those matches, isn't it? I mean, it's very, when, when like the first three minutes you lose two tier 10s. And it's like, oh boy. It's very, you know, like, uh. And no one's shooting this. Annapolis. So, pop my spotter and I'm trying to put damage into him to help out my Minotaur, my Garing, and my Annapolis. Only like two shells, but still, 10,000 damage. And the fact that he's just pushing in there, meaning he can get focused. 
And he's one of their three super ships. So I'll kill him and we get a slight advantage. So a super ship for tier two tens. It's still not a great trade, but it's still something. I wish I had hit him because I could have reset the cap. But we know what's in the cap. It's the Humphrey that's in that smoke screen. He's the one capping, but they've lost one tier 10. So it's not a huge loss. And I don't know why our Monty was pushing in against an Edgar and an Incomparable. I really don't know. I honestly don't know. But he does kill their Incomparable and... So, a battleship trade, it's not great, but against, but now there's just the Yamagiri and the Edgar on that flank. Okay, it's not bad, because the Yamagiri can just outspot and torp that Edgar to I need intelligence data. everything. I mean, there's nothing he can do. Spotter, returning to ship. And I push this side, because I'm like, I gotta push, I gotta do something, I gotta move up. And I need to help our Edgar, which he's full health right now, but I don't want him to die because I know there's a Moscow and I know there's a, well, Louisiana back there. And our CV's going in on the Humphrey, knocking his health down. So, making it a little bit easier. There's the Louisiana. And I'm not detected, so I don't. So we last we saw, we knew there was a shimmy down here, but we haven't seen him for in a while. And we see their Moskva. I outspot the Moskva. Now I'm only at like twenty thousand. Not great, but by the time he can react, my shells are already in the air. I get a, I get a quadruple citadel. And basically death strike him for over sixty thousand damage. Enemy battleship sighted. So now I can basically push straight in, and I'm hard detected now. So I know the DDs are here. Plus I have to deal with the Louisiana, and people are complaining how how you know broken the ship is. Well, watch how much I chunk this Louisiana. Three only four three shells hit. For 14,000 damage. It adds up. I mean, this guy goes down. Because a lot of people have to realize that this ship... The whole Torpedo weakness of that shot. Louisiana is its superstructure. That whole deck is superstructure. Meaning it goes down hard. Plus my guns overmatch practically Torpedo's every direction. part of them. And basically... Destroy him. Now I wish... I read your lip. I could have really used his help. Now he, he single fired every corpse and missed every corpse, except for one. Now, I think this guy was wanting to go for a tour first. Now he has his guns right there. Another 14k on him, with only four shells. He shoots me and basically bounces everything on my hull. Like, I use my belt armor and I bounce it off. Now, he is literally just pushing into me at this point. I think he was going to go for a ram. Or try to tank me. But, come on, man. You've already tried tanking me. And I just take all your health. And right there, 18,000. And he's gone. And our... Our Yamagiri has picked up their ship with our Gary, so we've taken A. And I'm not going to live long down here, but I'm basically holding this cap. Meaning that as long as I stay alive in this cap, we gain the point lead. And I don't have priority targets, so I don't know how many people are aiming at this. And then I see Torps indicator. I'm thinking, okay, maybe I can miss these Torps. And then I actually look and um, yeah I'm dead torpedoes to starboard those are shimakaze torps that tells you that this shimakaze and their Holland stayed on the on that 
I and J line for the last like nine minutes and just you know stopped but I pushed in I took out two of their tier 10 ships and then I stopped their cap points long enough to basically hold them in place so we then secure the cap lead and the point lead because our carrier picks up the Monty so we get so my death basically Swift gives it in their favor, then they kill, lose their battleship, it goes back in our favor. So we've got at least a 70 point lead on them now. And the point lead. So, and all their DDs, the Humphrey, the Shima, and the Holland, are all in the south. Literally, there's nothing they can do now. All their DDs, and I like, and I'm typing, Shima and Holland are all the way south. Kill the Edgar and we win. Basically, yeah. We kill the Edgar, their carrier can't do nothing because the Yamagiri can just outspot him and just torp him. So, kill the Edgar, and hands down, we win this match. Because there's nothing they can do. They would have to literally have every bad destroyer charge B just to, you know, win. But the fact is, I also gave enough time as I was charging for our midway to reposition from the south up to the north. Because Yam Yamato's just running at this point. Trying to stay alive. And also sitting in the back, but I pushed, I stopped the cap, killed two ships, ended up with 150,000 damage. Not bad. And I'll be honest, you rarely ever use your torps in the incomparable in random. You rarely ever do. It's mostly a gun build. This is one of the rare instances where you can actually use the torps in random. Now in ranked, you can use them a lot more. Now, our CV has still full squadrons. He's going in on this Edgar. And there's nothing this Edgar can do against the fire that's coming in on him. With the CV and Annapolis and the Yamato and just everything, it's just like all he can do is dodge and use his funny button. Our friend Mr. Stalker is dodging torps. Now, we'll also keep an eye on our Annapolis. Our Garing, friendly Garing, smokes him up so he doesn't get, you know, hit. But he's basically getting cross-dropped. I do kind of wish the Garing had stayed, you know, south and helped him. Because I wouldn't have died if had he been there. Or at least wouldn't have died as fast and no one was out there. But you see all these torps coming in from the Humphrey and the Shimakaze torps. We know where there are. And you see, look at all these torps spotted. Okay, look at all the torps. You think, okay, this Annapolis isn't going to die, right? Well, some stuff doesn't, does, doesn't surprise me anymore. And our carrier is going on on the Humphrey. So the Humphrey has to basically, you know, smoke up and try to live. And he, the Annapolis dies the Shimokaze torps that we had spotted for a long time. Doesn't make sense, does it? But the Humphrey's basically at no health now. And the Holland's dropping torps. They're basically trying to cross drop this minnow. Our minnow honestly could have avoided that, but you know, the Holland torps thankfully don't do much damage. And our CV does get a good blind drop and basically kills the Humphrey. And Shimmer's in Hydra range. Uh, the Minar and short fuse AP picks it up. Right there we pick up general offensive. And basically it's just the Holland left. And our and the C and our Yamagiri picks up the C V. It was a and the Shima saying great team enemy Shima saying great team. Well Shima my friend, you and Holland literally sat on the IJ line. So I <laughs> there was some questionable play. And I think my viewers would, will agree that the fact that those two DD sat on the eye line for so long is, well, questionable. Plus, had their Louisiana and Moscow actually worked together and pushed, the Edgar would have died much sooner. They could have actually taken and pushed that cap a lot easier. 
like much easier. Now our CV's going in, Tiny Tim's. He does a nice little strike to it. And yet, surprisingly, the kill that gets it is the Yamato from way back there. So, still, really good game. Shows the incomparable strengths. Came in first, of course. Nice to be. Both of you are above 2,000. 2,100. Nice. I think that, I think they're, um, Louisiana forgot mm -hmm. I had Torp because he was going to go for a ram Great on cruiser. me. Last bad win. 